Chris, can you give us an example of what, um, say, a pre-shift briefing might be like in Circle Up? Yeah. Uh, so the idea is to gather however you can with your group, your greater group, with your department, with your specialty or your team. And so that may be online, that may be all in one room, um, if people are appropriately wearing PPE. And uh, you would first give the agenda to the participants and give them an idea of how long this will be, um, and also the basic steps involved. Um, first step is a greeting with empathy, recognizing the difficulty of the moment. Sometimes we forget something that we forget to do when we're, when we're working hard. Um, and also um, letting people know the basic purpose of the briefing, which is to discuss process and protocol updates. What's the latest, which is to discuss uh, resilience and people support updates, and also to offer opportunities to rehearse in the moment, what we call mental rehearsals on any new routines or skills that are being asked of people dynamically. Mm -hmm. um, but back to the beginning of the briefing, the first thing that you do, and this is very um, signature of the Center for Medical Simulation, is you let people know um, what will be a success in that briefing. So this briefing will be a success if everyone's heard, if everyone's respected, if we create clear understandings, and if we make a plan for good work and for mutual support during the briefing. And those are really the ground rules. And that, that contributes to the psychological safety of the briefing conversation and also really invites participation and productivity and voice, shared participation in that conversation. Then the person, the leader of that would move on to process and protocol updates. And of course that would be content filled with all of the learning that's been right. happening from, from the daily work. Um, and you'd also ask the question, what have we learned in the past 24 hours that we haven't discussed yet that we can use today to inform us? And that really gives, the assembled group an opportunity yeah. to participate mm -hmm. and you can get a lot of value from that and then shifting gears to uh, the subject of how can we be resilient how can we support one another better again what have we learned in the last 24 hours that we need to know to contribute to that uh, what are things that we're implementing um, from lessons learned recently uh, maybe from lessons learned from other organizations what are we doing to support one another? And then also a reminder to have supportive conversations throughout the, the day, throughout the shift. Finally, we would move on to mental rehearsals. If there's something significant that's being implemented, if there are more patients coming in, fewer clinicians available to treat them, equipment shortages, PPE shortages, we would um, introduce the new ways of working that are connected to those changes and actually rehearse mentally Take that opportunity to do a bit of a simulation, but in your head for a few minutes, and then actually have a debriefing related to that mental rehearsal. And what this can do is really improve people's understandings of what's being asked of them, give, giving them a mm -hmm. mental image of what it would take to succeed with the new right. uh, work approach, and then have some questions and answers and feel more prepared as they go off to work. So Chris, I have one question about the mental rehearsals. You, you said it, you sort of rehearse in your mind, yet you're there with your team. So are people talking out loud? Are people saying, well, you know, I, I'm the nurse in this situation, so my job is going to be making sure that we have all of the emergency transport equipment or whatever a person's role is. Do you, do you have the team members actually talk to each other during the mental yeah. rehearsal? Yeah, there's, there's, there's a moment of actually explanation of what the thing is and the new approach is, and then actually some moments of silent rehearsal. Okay, or people often are kind of with eyes in closed, their head, picturing <laughs> yeah. what will this be like. I'm picturing That's walking right. down the hall. Yeah, okay. That's right, exactly, and and then followed by a debriefing, as you would do if you had okay. a simulation. Gotcha. Here's what I was imagining myself doing. Here's what I thought was good about it and clear about it. Here are some questions that I had that I have mm -hmm. still, and and yeah. talking about that and clarifying yeah. those things. Okay. And these are invaluable exercises that we can do to make ourselves more prepared as we're going off to work yeah. in these extremely difficult times. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of the shift, we advocate for a short debriefing. Can you walk us through what that might look like? Yeah, so the debriefing, again, involves a similar introduction and tone. Lots of empathy around the greeting. Empathy for yourself. You have to remember sometimes to be, have empathy for yourself. Yeah. Um, we forget about that. So this is a hard moment. Thank you for gathering. We will succeed here if we collect what we've experienced 
and if we learn from that and we use that to improve our ongoing work experiences. So that sort of introduction and then followed by an exploration of what has been successful, what has been working for us, how can we keep doing that? What has been challenging? How can we understand what's been challenging? How can we explore it such that we understand the root causes of those challenges? And then really working together as a group to co-create solutions, to do that together. And people really um, get good emotions from being part of a solution as opposed to feeling as if others are designing solutions for them. So if we design these solutions together, create innovations and use that to improve our own work, but also use that to improve the work of our colleagues who are coming on to shift. Mm -hmm. And so that's a big aspect of Circle Up is getting the information and the solutions from the debriefings to the briefing and the preparation of of the next shift. Yeah, because there's going to be a lot of innovation along the way here. And I think it's important that we capture that. So that's a great mechanism to do that. Absolutely. All right. Well, thanks so much for walking us through that, Chris. Thank you.